What if I told you that the Hydro Archon was based on Cthulhu, the High Priest, or Azathoth, or any of the cosmic horrors in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos? Because if you didn't already know, a certain Hersher from the Honkai series that could be related to Genshin's Hydro Archon is actually based on what some of us would call the Great Old Ones. If you didn't know about that, then we're in for a little ride, because this series is gonna look very deep into Hoyo's very first games, games of which we are not familiar familiar with and have very little knowledge of. And uh, yeah, I'm back because uh, I got my wisdom tooth pulled and uh, I have not been able to talk for a very long time. And uh, yeah, we're back to making videos again. Haha. <laughs> so join me again in trying to pinpoint who the next Archon is going to be based on both Honkai and Genshin's lore while slowly driving myself insane pretending to know what I'm saying. This video is about the Hydro Archon's possible origins using Honkai's previous tidbits of lore and merging it together with Genshin's lore that we currently know so far. Timestamps are in the description and in the comments for anyone who likes to skip into different sections of the video. Now. I'm going to talk about one character of interest in regards to who or what the Hydro Archon is based on. That character is Kana, the alien Hersher of the ocean, which is based on Hoyo's game Gun Girl Z. I haven't heard that game in a while. In the game Honkai Impact, there is no playable water character. Only water locations of great importance and characters interacting and represented with water. So we can't really tell who will be what based on that alone. We do have characters with heavy French and Latin origins, which I will talk about in a different video, as well as characters in the game and manga with watery events and descriptions in the story. But none of them have ever interacted with water and controlled water specifically. So if Honka Impact does not have water elements and water mechanics and don't have characters that use water, then who does? Well, the Hersher of the Ocean does. Now, the Hersher of the Ocean, as far as I can tell, is only from the game Gun Girl Z, which was Hoyo's second game after Fly Me to the Moon, both of which I think aren't playable anymore sadly unless you have a third party software but we're not talking about that. What about the Hersher of the Ocean? What is she about? What's her personality? Does she fit with the Hydro Archon's description? And what does she look like? Well you'd be glad to know that this is what your Hydro Archon waifu could look like based on the splash arts of the Hersher of the Ocean. As you can see she pretty much fits how an Archon could look like but not how she would look like in the modern Genshin timeline. She wears these thin robes that look like a very familiar group of people. Anyone thinking of those moon sisters in Inazuma? Those robe figures that were portraying some sort of deity? Like come on, she is actually one of those moon sisters. I mean look at those eyes! She even uses tentacles when fighting Kiana. Like please Hoyoverse, let her be the Hydro Archon. Hey, what are you doing in my room? Oh wait a minute. Ah, <clears throat> yeah, that earlier was just some random guy. But yes, her overall aesthetic when completely covered in her robe is albeit similar to the moon sisters and or whatever these cultists looking individuals are. The details on her robe look similar as well as the fact that she has on her splash art eyes that float around her. Something interesting about her design is that she was based from HP Lovecraft's Cosmic Horrors. Now we can't really tell which Lovecraftian horror or Lovecraftian god she is based on simply because every creature, being, and god in the mythos looks relatively the same. But from what I can tell with my limited knowledge of Cthulhu Cthulhu Mythos, she is based on and was canonically born as one of the Great Old Ones, namely Cthulhu, as well as being a representation of Cthulhu if, well, she was an anime girl. One of their forms and title that I found on her wiki is Cthulhu, like actually Cthulhu, which is the same Cthulhu as this one. Yeah, I prefer the cosmic version over the anime girl too, don't worry. Her alias name Kana or Kana was given to her by Kiana when they first met can be derived from the Christian religion Kana of Galilee which is a town where Jesus himself performed his very first miracle turning water into wine. Now if that doesn't get Hydro as it could be I don't know what does. Her occupation is also called the supreme ruler of earth seas. So yeah, she's all about water with every fiber of her being. In terms of Genshin lore, what can we talk about considering the Hersher of the ocean? Well, 
She also merges well with the Oceanids or the Loach folk. Albeit the Oceanids don't really like the current god of justice, her entire story as the Hersher of the Ocean or Hydro Archon and her control over every aspect of water could be tied to why the Oceanids don't like the god of justice. Remember, the Hydro Archon died and was replaced by the god of justice. So if Kana isn't the god of justice, introducing her could have a whole new story in regards to being the previous Hydro Archon as well as her visually looking like the Moon Sisters in Inazuma. So Moon Sister theories could, I don't know, put them together. Like say the Hydro Archon was a Moon Sister back then before she died and the God of Justice came in after that story. I don't know. Tangent. Let's think for a second that Hoyo does choose Kana in her backstory as the Hydro Archon's lore. Then if we take into account the inspirations from her design and lore and put it into Genshin's, that would mean that the conventional gods and demons aren't the only things that we could find out there. How each god looks like would also be radically different than what we already know. Since Kana was born as one of the Great Old Ones, then it wouldn't be outlandish to think that there might be some other Great Old Ones out there. Not just the Great Old Ones, but even the outer gods, which are basically personifications of the entire outer space as a whole, and serve as the representation of the fundamental aspects of reality. For example, Yogg-Sothoth and Azathoth, the first outer god. Compared to the great old ones like Cthulhu, the outer gods transcend form and exist indefinitely. For lack of explanation, think of the outer space or dark void that Fanes was born from, the one called the Primal Void. That's basically the outer gods in H.P. Lovecraft's mythology, a personification of what should only be planes of existence. I mean, as if Ars Goetia and other mythologies, demons and gods aren't weird and cryptic enough, right? If this is true, then we get to see some eldritch horrors in Genshin as well. Ah. Ah. Back to the Hersher of the Oceans in game lore and description, her entire backstory is that she was born not from this world. We're talking about Earth, by the way. She was born as one of the Great Old Ones, which was canonically based on Cthulhu. And after she became Hersher, yes, she wasn't a Hersher right away, she was but a being and a member of the Great Old Ones. Now then, after she gained her Hersher power, she then decided to wipe out her entire race and started conquering and destroying worlds. She quote-unquote turned civilizations into insane beasts and committed mass genocides in large scale." End quote. So what's bigger than genocide? Mass genocide. And what's bigger than that? large-scale mass genocides, which I didn't even know could be put together. This Hersher is literally Thanos of the Honkai universe, but instead of wiping out half of the world, she decided that humanity was just not worth it and snapped twice, without even scratching a nail doing so. Based on the wikis, which is the only place I could get info from, she has a really vague backstory of how she destroyed her own world and went on to destroy other worlds and civilizations in gory detail. After which she goes to sleep for thousands of years until humans emerged and did the exact same thing again. Large scale mass genocide and goes to sleep for a second time. On the third time she wakes up, the humans were ready to fight against her. Namely, Dr. May who was the same Dr. May in the old era who only managed to tranquilize Kana and make her sleep again. 40,000 years later, this is where our little hero Kiana and the Hersher of the Void comes in and resets the world for her. At this point in time, she meets the normal Kiana and becomes kind of friends with her or at least that's what I think happened. Later on they fought and she was sealed on Giano Island for another 40,000 years which surprise surprise is also a place in the mainland with a pretty big river in the middle of its city. After the time skip, Kana wakes up for the fifth time. Is that right? The fifth time? Uh, uh, she wakes up again and decides that she wants to make Kiana's reincarnation her waifu for all eternity. Don't ask me how that happened but unfortunately for her, she was sealed up and is sleeping again for the sixth time. Man, this Hersher really loves sleeping, doesn't she? Oh, she actually does love sleeping. Now, we know what she is, who she is, what she looks like, but what does she do? Well, based on her description, she is quite a unique character. Her Honkai power is so powerful that she turns everything around her into Honkai beasts just by standing near them. And I quote, her powers were so great that she could easily turn people into mindless beasts or insane psychopaths capable of committing the worst kind of atrocities. Using this, she destroyed countless planets. 
end quote. Keyword, countless planets. So Kana would most likely have been to other planets and galaxies in space. Sadly, she's the only one of her kind that's left that we know of, so we can only hope that there were more great old ones somewhere in the universe of Honkai. She is immortal, like other Hershards of course, and has a plethora of abilities including Telepathy, flight, shape-shifting, brainwashing, reality warping, teleportation, possession, telekinesis, and capable of controlling multiple natural elements like air, water, and earth. Of course, as a deity that has absolute control over the earth's seas, she can only control air, water, and earth. But who's counting, right? Notice that all her abilities fit the description of what the actual Cthulhu can do. Her brainwash ability and shapeshift, as well as possession ability, is what interests me the most. Because if the god of justice can also do these weird, crazy things, then her story as well as the entire story of Fontaine, especially since it's about masks and masquerades, is going to be very interesting. Think of how many aristocrats and nobles she's already brainwashed with her abilities. It's gonna be weird though how Hoyo can integrate that into Genshin. Maybe we can control Hilichurals for a short period of time or make hydro pets and creatures like the hypostasis. Now, according to trivia, she is the very first Hersher to get away without getting hurt whatsoever. So this means that she's the only Hersher that still has not been dealt with. Every other Hersher we've fought and run into in Honkai so far has been defeated and or subdued properly by the Valkyries. Even Kiana technically beat the Hersher of the Void in some sort of way. And after that, becoming the Hersher of Flame Scion. So in regards to Kana, she is still the original Hersher of the Ocean. And there hasn't been any other person or being to inherit her core. All the smaller details like that, as well as her aliases, hobbies, and goals, and even crimes are listed in her wiki if you want to know more about Kana. But that's pretty much everything that I could squeeze in terms of her origin, inspiration, relation, lore, and a bit of theory. So Kana checks out a lot of the boxes that you would want from the Hydro Archon, or God of Justice. Her personality from what I can tell is that she loathes humans and boasts her being a god to them on a daily basis. She has the perfect judgmental character against humanity and maybe possibly against other gods too. She is the canon Hersher of water and could therefore be easily linked to the Hydro Archon, along with her rather disturbing backstory and origins of terms related to her, as well as being part of the Honkai universe and having art and design already made since possibly before 2014, she is the perfect and ideal candidate to be the Hydro Archon. But there is one problem. Nobody, and I mean nobody, knows her right now. I mean, did you know her before watching this video? I mean, props to you if you did. But basically, everyone and their grandma is either coping in Genshin right now, thinking that Durandal or Mobius is the Hydro Archon after those skins right there, or happily playing Honkai while reluctantly waiting for Hoyo to update Genshin. So most likely, everyone wouldn't know about Kana, the Hersher of the Ocean, since her story dates back all the way to Hoyo's second game, which I'm pretty sure people know about, but don't know anything about either. I will say, however, that she takes a lot of boxes that Hoyo would need to hype her sales and character. I mean, who doesn't want an Eldritch Horror that is the embodiment of madness and spite, right? Everyone loved it when Fuwa got her psycho phase, becoming the Hersher of Sentience. A little sprinkle of power creeping to ruin the game state and give her a skin right away and you have the best character in all of Genshin theoretically. They could pretty much pull off a regal and soft-spoken princess too with how she looks like in her human form and make her a crazy mad archon from using her Hersher form, coalescing into the perfect beautiful queen with psychopathic gap moe tendencies. But again, these are all just theories about a character that is going to take months and months to arrive in the game itself, as well as Hoyo already adding newer characters to both games that could be better candidates for inspiration in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please click and perform mass genocide on that like button and don't hesitate to destroy my subscribe button as well. Comment below what you guys think of Kana, the Hersher of the Ocean, and the possibility of her being the Hydro Archon, as well as large-scale mass clicking on that notification button too to catch up on my content. I usually stream whenever there's new content and when I feel like streaming a different game. That's gonna be it for this video, so I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah, bye!